chapter nine, we're going to start to look at objects. And Java is an object-oriented language. And that means one of the main uh, structures you're going to create is called a class. And when you create a member of that class, that member is called an object. You've used some objects before. Uh, you use system in and system out. And you also use a scanner and a random object. Uh, let's talk about primitives versus objects. You've used quite a bit of primitives, integers, doubles, chars, uh, and booleans. You might be thinking strings, but don't worry about strings yet. These are the four common primitives. Uh, you can also use floats. Those are a little less common, and some of the alternatives to integers like shorts and bytes, but we don't cover that much. So really, these are the, the four main primitives that we've used. Primitives have a value, and that's pretty much it. They each refer to one spot in memory, which we don't need to worry about too much, but just know that they basically only have one piece of data, which is their value. And that's, that's what a primitive is. Uh, they're, everything else in Java is a pointer or an a pointer to an object, and that'll be explained soon. Uh, but just remember, integers, all these primitives, they always have a direct value. Uh, and they have their own value, which is uh, going to come into play right now. So we've done arrays before. Any type of an array is not a primitive. It's pointer to a space in memory or pointer to an object. So here we have a character array with three things in it. And the actual array variable is a pointer to where uh, this data lives. Uh, now you can have uh, strings. Strings, they might seem like a primitive, but they are not. And what happens with a string, this value of dog is stored in some location of memory. And then wherever your variable is, in this case it's word, is actually a pointer to where that lives in memory. And so let's go ahead, run this code. Now, with objects, you're generally going to have to use the new keyword when you create one. There's a couple shortcuts. One of them was with strings. We've already been using the shortcut. And with strings, normally the way you'd create an object is you would say new right here and then the object name with parentheses. And we'll see very soon that this method right here is called a constructor. Um, and this method's always named directly after the class. And this will create a new uh, string with the value of dog. There's a shortcut down here, which actually, when you look at it, makes you think that strings are not a class, but they actually are. And this shortcut right here that's happening on line 13, where you just say equals, is implicitly creating a new string. So it's basically running code just like that. It's just a shortcut. You can also have the string word three. Uh, you don't need to uh, assign a value to a pointer. And let's go and sout. We'll do, I don't think it'll be any surprise if I sout word one. So we can see dog right there. Uh, word two is not going to be exciting, so we'll skip that and we'll go right to word three. Uh oh. There's going to be a complaint right here. You can't print. Um, stop it. I should let it run. Run anyways. All right. Let's scroll out a little bit. Oh, it won't let me run. So it has to be initialized. All right. You have to give it a value. There is a default value. If you don't want to give it anything in particular, there's a special value called null. And what null is, think of it like a nothing. Uh, when it prints out, the way that you turn null into a string, it turns into a string uh, that is null, which is kind of weird. But this, think of this as not having a value. 